You're listening to PDR Tool Talk, all about PDR stories, tools, and techniques. For the thousands in attendance, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Hey everybody, this is John Hiley here with another episode of PDR Tool Time. Coming to you with Daniel Grom, Mike Toledo, Vince D'Alessandro. And we have a couple special guests on today. We have Big Jeremy, Low Life Carol. And we have Paul Corden. And uh, on today's episode, we're going to be talking a lot about wholesale, what's happening out there. I think Paul's got some ideas. Jeremy, he's got some people in wholesale. Mike's got some people in wholesale. So we're going to have a lot to talk about that because that's a big concern in the industry right now. And people just don't know which way it's going. So anyhow, Vince, what we got going on, dude? Lead us, lead lead us, us into lead. this. Okay. Well, if you before we get into that, we want you to tune into episode 87, which was a excellent episode with Todd Zimmerman, where he released the greatest invention of 2017 into the PDR industry. I, we all saw it. It was the light. We had Paul on to hype it up a little bit last week, too. So make sure you tune into that episode featuring want that Todd thing. Zimmerman and his awesome light and his awesome rods and table as well. Uh, the, the boards on PDR tool time and stuff like that are have been going off on Facebook and I don't think there's too much drama going on out there besides well, the, put a shout out to Ultra. You know, they they put up 5 grand for relief for hurricane and I I I mean I think think that Steve at Ultra is awesome for doing that and they're working in conjunction with uh, Christina at Anson's and you know what we live, uh, we're part of a great community, and um, I think it's really something to be said about. Yeah. yeah, you know what? It's funny you said that because I'm actually wearing a shirt that Anson is doing, which is $25 for the shirt, and all 100% of the proceeds goes towards PDR technicians in Houston that are struggling with uh, the recovery efforts of the, the hurricane which happened. Uh, Craig himself is driving down to Houston on a weekly basis, delivering all the goods that have been donated by other PDR technicians and cash cards for Home Depot and everything else. So all the proceeds for this shirt, go go on to Anson, get a shirt, and 100% proceeds go towards PDR technicians. There's no you know percentage for the shirt or anything like that. They're not keeping anything. All of it goes directly to the... That's a good-looking shirt, man. Yeah, it is. Let me see it. I don't see it. It has all the states in the heart shape with Texas at the bottom. Nice. Back it says to hail and back. Oh, I didn't know nice. That. Dude. Where, where do you get Dude, that's uh, cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm, go I'm going and buying that right now. Doesn't it yeah. suck, Mike, when you don't read Facebook and you're always the last person to find this stuff out? Honestly, but I get we get more done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get more done. So yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Daniel, because there there is a lot of uh, effort out there helping these people down in Houston and uh, make sure you donate, donate something if you can. What happened to Paul? I feel like Paul disappeared on us, but that's okay because we can he'll, go ahead he'll and he'll, he'll, he'll join back in. He probably lost his internet connection, but uh, let's go ahead and Jeremy jump in here. Tell us a little bit about who you are, um, you know, your company and uh, you know, just a little background on, on yourself here before we get started with the wholesale talk. Okay. Um, I own, operate, direct paintless dent repair. Been doing PDR since 02. Uh, got in it. It held here. I think I was 19 years old or something like that. It held here, and uh, I watched uh, a couple of dent guys, hell guys, of course, make $5,000 a day and was like, whoop, whoop, new job coming at me. Same reason everybody else gets into it for money. So I, I did hell from 02 to 07. Um, got an opportunity to hook up with one of these big dealer groups here in, in town. Uh, hooked up with them, started doing a little bit of wholesale. I thought you couldn't make money on wholesale. I was wrong. I met my wife that same year. 
started a wholesale company, quit the hell thing. And then it held on me again in 11. I already had two technicians working. So I jumped right back into hell and let them kind of do their, do their thing. Now, where are you based out of Jeremy? Um, the tri cities, which is, uh, Bristol, Johnson city, Kingsport, East Tennessee. Gotcha. And you do still travel for uh hail or you pretty much staying, staying home now. Uh, I still travel and sell. Um, if it hails me and, and one of my, my wholesale route techs, he's a great salesman. So me and him will go out and sell. I'll have my wife on the phone selling and, uh, you know, I still chase. I mean, I was in Wyoming last year for seven months working. So nice. Well, welcome to the show. We haven't had you on before. It's a pleasure to have you on and, uh, yeah, uh, give yeah. us some, uh, knowledge bombs on the wholesale industry. Cause, uh, th- this episode is part two. Part one, we all bashed wholesale, and I heard it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we're uh, we're waiting to get corrected by. Well, I was the optimistic one. Yeah. I would say, <laughs> I was at least trying to be optimistic because I think we we need to change that realm for techs out there. Uh, you know, Paul Corden changed our retail mindset, and I think it can be changed for the wholesale. Um, and it starts with the grassroots kind of a, a thing like this, and you got to just start thinking a little bit differently and getting guys to, Hey, creep your prices up a little bit. Well, I think, well, I, I, I agree with you, Daniel. I'd love to see that happen. The thing this if you're going to stay in wholesale, and Jeremy, maybe you can you can chime in on this. And I wish uh, Paul's having some technical difficulties, so yeah, he's having some internet problems. But he'd probably want to chime in on this. Okay. What's um, up, Danny? You're coming in really loud. Oh. Am I? Sorry, yeah. I'm turning it down. Just um, slightly. How's that? Yeah, perfect. So, Jeremy, what do you? So you're you're saying you're making good money in in wholesale? Tell oh, us yeah. a little bit about that. So you know. Wholesale, is, it's tricky, man. I mean, the it's all about the location of where you're working at for me and how much competition you have. Here, you know, it's probably 250,000 people between the three cities, and, you know, there's 60 techs. You just got to educate them. And like y'all was saying in the last podcast where, you know, Daniel, where you're saying, you know, get everybody on the same page, that's really the only way you're going to get the prices up, you know. I agree that wholesale is about a dead market. I mean, it's, I do it. I make good money at it. We do great. We do great because we live in a good old boy area and we're the good old boy. So, you know, if you live in a, a, you know, a big metropolitan area, there's not a lot of good old boy dealerships. No, ships, no. Yeah, I yeah. agree. And but doesn't that go down to what you're really saying is your relationship. And I, yeah. I, and I really think, you know, cultivating your relationship with whoever you're dealing with directly. And if you take care of them, let me make some money on this car and I'll, and I'll do some favors for you on this car. A little give and take like that goes a long ways. Oh, it does for sure. I mean, our thing is, is, is we, we do everything for the dealer. I mean, we bend over backwards for our dealers. I've always been that way. My body shop accounts, my retail customers, you know, my whole thing is, is I, I really strive to make everybody happy as I possibly can. And it don't matter if it's wholesale or if it's max retail, you know, um, relationships is what matters. You know, it, 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 if you really look at it here, you have very, you know, just awful technicians that have great accounts in my area, but their relationship is so strong. It's just really hard to take those accounts. I'm very dominant. I want everything, you know, so, and I, that's what I've been doing here plowing since 07 and just, I want it all, you know. So. Now, would you say it, it really comes down to a lot of trust? If a dealer can trust you and know that you're going to take more work off of their table, stuff that they would normally have to do, check in cars or go walk around a car, but if they trust you and you can do that, that job for them, that saves them time and they're, they're worth, that's worth something. I agree. I mean, we, we, we have all the trust in the world here, man. I mean, they love us. We show up. I mean, every, literally every time I go and check in with my managers, they're telling me how much they love one of my technicians. And that's the, that's great. 
that don't help the pricing. You know, the pricing is still not just where I would like that. for it to be. Just going to say that. The, 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 the discussion is how can you raise your prices? And my take is you got to at least raise it 2% minimum a year. And if you don't do that, Five, 10 years from now, you're going to say, you know what, uh, Mr. Manager, you know, I, I've been realizing I needed to make more money. So I'm going to go up 15, 20% this year. You can't do that. There's no, no way you'll be able to sustain that. It, it's shock. It's sticker shock. And you're like, you know what, buddy, I'm going to find someone else. So, I mean, Jeremy, how do you, how, are you, how long you've been at the same prices? I, honestly, you don't have to tell me your prices, but how long you've been at the same price? Do you raise your prices? Or are you kind of stagnant or what's going on man you just hopefully you get a lot of volume or what i've I've not raised my prices i started like i said i started 07 uh the recession hit and i actually lowered my prices i just got them back to where i started them you know about three years ago um we make our money on big stuff you know we make our money you know really i mean we charge i look at something big wholesale i try to get a hundred dollars an hour you know, that's, that's how I'd look at it. If it's going to take me three hours, it needs to be this much. You know, some people look at it, they want more money, but there are painters that will paint. Where I live right now, there's painters that will paint a uh, hood, fender, everything, blend the door, 700 bucks. So, I mean, I've got to be under these painters' prices or they'll just paint them. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that, man. And you also have a retail thing going, plus you're doing hail, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to buy, I'm actually in the process of trying to buy a uh, retail facility right now in the big city that we, that's in our area, Johnson City, right on the motor mile where all the dealers and body shops are. Um, and then, like I said, I, I, I dedicate about half the year to doing hail. Um, you know, so everything together, you know, we do really well. My wholesale, I still think does does killer, but Again, you know, the prices haven't went up in 10 years, and I just don't know. I don't know how you get the prices up with these managers. They're used to something. You do it for so long, and then you go up, and even if it's too, let's just say if it's if you're charging $40 a panel and you go, hey, I need 42 they're going to be like, hold on a second. This guy that come in yesterday was at 30 You know, I like you, but yeah. you need to go down, not up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I know. Yeah. I think you almost have to have an attitude that you don't care. You know, I, I was, I started dropping, uh, some of my wholesale accounts moving towards doing a hundred percent retail. And as soon as I had that attitude, everything changed and they felt it. They knew it. They knew I didn't give a crap and it made all the difference in the world. And they bent, they bent to my prices. But you're also in the market, Daniel, that you you have a handful of technicians. You, you could probably count them on one hand, your competition. Yeah, you're right. You know, you're right. When you're in the market, like like Jeremy said, you had 60, 60 technicians. If you count the hell, if you count the hell techs and the Dording techs and every hell tech that don't have a good year is here trying to do wholesale in the wintertime, there are probably 60 technicians in the in this little tiny area. That's what I was going to say, because it's seasonal. I mean, it, even in the winter, it's hard to get work. However, I'm calling you, like, I think I called you, like, last year. You're like, I mean, me and Jeremy have been friends for a few years now. We, we keep pretty tight. And I'll call him. What's going on, Jeremy? Oh, it's about five to be low right now. I'm just doing a couple dents on the <laughs> lot right now. I'm like, what? You're like, yeah, I got my blowtorch and yada, yada. And I'm like, I don't know how you're doing that, man. You know, but you're out there. You're hustling. You're doing your thing because. Folks, if, if you're, if this is what I would be afraid of, man. If you ain't going to do it lower than someone else will. And that's the thing. It's like, yeah, we can all try to raise the prices, but there's always going to be somebody out there who's going to low ball, low cut, come right in there because they're starving. It's kind of like the NFL. If the NFL went on, tried to go on strike right now, no, they're not, they, the guys can't afford it. They can't afford to go on strike. There's just no way. And I don't see the PDR wholesale market being able to do the same thing. I somebody tell prove me wrong. Chime in. How are you going to walk away from a thirty thousand dollar, twenty thousand dollar account, you know, whatever it is, and going, okay, I'm gonna just take my chances and the next guy, let's see what he'll do. And he's gonna get the account. 
I, well, I, I do think, fine. Mike, the only way to actually do that would be as if you went in there and just blew the guy out of the water. Whoever's in there doing the repair work, you went in there and blew him out of the water, and you let them know for these big, dynamic, nasty dents or whatever that you're probably going to fix half-ass, but they'd be happy to have them fixed half-ass because they're going to have them half-ass fixed anyway. Yeah, and right. you, you, if you go in there with that strategy, you're probably still going to have to match his panel prices for the smaller dings, but you're going to have to somehow make it up on maybe fixing some of the larger dents and stuff like that that the guy can't fix. You know what I mean? But that doesn't that doesn't help really bring up the general price, but your average ticket could go up, but the amount of time you spend on the car is going to go up, and um, you're probably going to be left about where you're at. Now, if you're a new technician who can do advanced repairs and you're trying to penetrate into the wholesale market, that's a way. I mean, that's a way in. You go in and you find the dents that the other guy can't fix or is not willing to fix because they're going to beat them. They're going to say, no, you do it for 35 bucks, like you said. And you say, nah, you know, I just want these. I just want these. You know what I mean? And yeah. then eventually you just weasel your way from there. Jeremy, are you, are you, are, <laughs> you are, uh, I, I know you, you plant your seeds in different, you don't keep all your eggs in one basket. That's he plants saying, his so. seeds in different. I didn't know where that was going to go, but oh, well, I believe saying, he... I tell people plant your seeds so you don't have some fruit trees later on. Okay? No, not that way. Either. I thought you were so. talking about little Jeremy Carroll's running around everywhere because <laughs> he is a dominant male monkey type dude. Yeah, so he may crazy. plant his seeds. <laughs> Alpha predator. <laughs> um, no, like you said, you know, uh, here's another way. Like we have an interior business, you know, I own this business, automotive interior experts with a couple partners and they, um, Cody, my lead tech, his dad owns a business called moving collars and we all work as one unit. So by getting, I feel like, you know, with the wholesale market, if I can get one of those guys into a dealer, even if I can't get my dent guy, I'll eventually get that dealership because I got a foot in there, you know, and that's, that was one thing that, you know, I try to tell people if you're having a hard time acquiring any type of wholesale or anything, add something on, add something that they're not, that they're not. Doing. Yeah, that's good. You know, I mean, we, we, like we added wheels probably two years ago, every dealer around here, Hey, do you do wheels? Do you do wheels? Do you do wheels? I said, do you want them done? Yeah. Okay. We'll do them. And you know, now I've got a wheel guy and another guy training on wheels. You know, I mean, it's just, again, you're still doing wholesale and it's still cheap. You know, you're just yeah. getting other and ways to make money. Can, can I ask you something, Jeremy, do they like it when the bills just come from one vendor? Is that. They do. From what I've gathered, they like it, but we are three different companies. So it's not just one vendor, but what they, what they really like is they can call me. I can call one of these other techs from these other companies instead of having to keep up with 15 different phone numbers, yeah. they can just call me and I can dispatch that technician. So yeah, they got yeah. central dispatch. Basically. Yeah. Okay. And how are you paying your, your, your guys for like the wheel guy, the interior guy, are you paying them commission? What yeah. are you doing? Everybody's on commission. I mean, it's a different, depending on your ability and your skill, I pay those guys differently. Um, you know, but other than that, everybody's a hundred percent commission. Um, that's and, how you get the best of the work out of them too. I mean, you can't. I, yeah. Oh yeah. Pay somebody hourly and watch how fast they work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're standing with one hand on the phone with the other hand. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, Jeremy, when, when hail hits in your area, how do you handle your wholesale accounts when you're hustling and, and busting butt trying to fix hail? I know something has to give at times, you know, yeah. it, and are they loyal enough that they're going to stick around or do you still send someone out just to make an appearance? Of, hey, we're still here. We'll fix a couple cars and get back to the hill cars. No, I go, I go to my accounts. I mean, I don't, if it hails here, I don't work. I manage, I'd go from place to place. I make 10 or 12 stops a day because we service, um, in this area, we probably service 40 or 50 dealerships and about 30 body shops. So anytime it hails like a big, like the 2011 storm, for example, I just, I would do my route all day. I would still do all my route. And I had a, you know, back then me and me and uh, one of my buddies was teamed up, you know, so he run the hell side for me, you know, and I did the wholesale and then I would come to my warehouse and work at night. 
Um, but we still like that. They stay pretty loyal, you know, but the stuff was so beat. Nobody wanted to do it anyway. I was the only dumbass that would come in and do it. So that's probably why they stayed loyal. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I remember back in the day when I worked for Dent Wizard back in Chicago, whenever we capitalized on that, we would, we would jump on any com- com- competitors lots because we knew that they were off doing hail somewhere. It's like, okay, we're going to sk- steal that lot away from them because they're not there. They're not servicing them. We would send a technician out immediately. I did the same thing, man. When it held here, every local dent guy was like, oh, I want to go make hell money. And right. they would just drop him, I mean, $30,000 a year accounts. I had one guy drop three of those to me that year. So I like $90,000, you know, raise. I took it and run with it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, we got Paul cording back here and paul this is going to give you a catch up what we've been talking about is that we uh, are talking about wholesale pricing and how jeremy uh was how he hasn't really raised his prices for a long time and we're wondering what was the best way to go in there and john's approach was you know he's doing all the collision stuff and jeremy bends over backwards and does all this stuff to, to keep the account and to make sure that nobody comes in there but we're talking about the ideal of this podcast is What's your ideas on your suggestions on how to get people to raise their prices in the wholesale market? So the first, the very first thing I would do, uh, and, and let me be honest. I mean, I don't do, I did wholesale for a long time. I don't do any wholesale anymore. I'm um, a little bit here and there when it comes up, but um, you know, the, the age old it's a lost cause. <laughs> well, because retail is great. Right. But I know a lot of guys killing it doing wholesale only. And honestly, it's a, it's a little bit easier of a lifestyle because you don't have to go face to face with a retail customer. You know, really all you got to deal with is your managers. And once you know how to deal with those guys, I mean, you can deal with anybody. I have to agree. Uh, I got two technicians. They're just scared to death to do retail and they are just, they show up on time. They do the wholesale work from, for my accounts and they don't want to do anything else. They're comfortable. Like you said, Paul. So I do get that point. But you know, if, if you, if you can get a wholesale account set up, right. Uh, I think that, I mean, even personally, me, I would I would consider doing wholesale again, you know, but the, the pricing would have to be right. The structure would have to be right. And one of the things I get people ask me this question a lot. Do I have a structure for wholesale? What are my ideas about maximizing my accounts, my wholesale accounts? How do I get the most out of them? And the one thing that I would tell guys is um, the first thing that they need to implement that most guys don't, maybe I think some do, but not, most guys don't, is uh, come up with a size limit. Give them a limit at where you're going to stop. I'm not covering this. It's not part of your package deal, whatever that is, right? To cut them off, uh, for instance, I was telling you my brother uh, does some wholesale, and um, he uh, he'll constantly he'll call me and ask me, hey, how do how do you think we should set up this deal? And uh, I I'll tell him, listen, don't do anything bigger than three inches. Three inches is what you'll do your wholesale cars for at the wholesale price. Anything over that is basically going to get uh, treated like a retail dent where. We're going to mark out the damage. We're going to measure it with the price guide. We're going to give them a full heavy retail price. And then we're going to say, listen, my deal to you is my wholesale account is I'm going to charge you X percentage of this full retail number to do anything over the limit, uh, the size limit. So the first thing guys can do um, who who are rolling in a wholesale account is give them a size limit, man. Come up with an agreement where you go, listen, my wholesale price is great. It's meant for volume. Uh, but we can't do volume if we're doing six inch dents on every car that comes through and it's part of the package deal. Now, That's one of the suggestions that I make. What do, what do you think of this approach of basing it? Hey, we're because anything over three inches is normally going to go to a body shop. A body shop is going to charge X amount. We're going to cheat. We're going to save you 40% off of that body shop price or, you know, pick a number. Um, you could do that. Um, I, what, what I would prefer to see guys do is go find out who are the body shops that are servicing the dealership and go be, be their dent guy, right? Because what's going to happen is, and this is an example that I have, I have a, uh, a dealer group, uh, four, four brands under one roof. They've got a centralized body shop. I don't do any of the dealer work. Now, I do when they send it through the body shop. So I've had them send used cars and new cars through the body shop because they have a separate guy that does their wholesale work and the wholesale guys aren't going to touch the big nasty stuff. I mean, I know from when I was a wholesale guy, if it was that big and nasty I, and I didn't have time for it, I wasn't getting paid for it. I'm not doing it. It's just going to stay there. You know, it's going to be outside of the coverage or whatever. So I, I, I'll go ahead. Paul. Yeah. Then the body shop gets the car and what do they do is they go, well, we know 
Paul can fix it. So let's not paint it. This is a busy body shop. So let's give them the, I'll give you uh, the, the true uh, a scope on it is that it's a busy body shop. You know, oftentimes they, they don't want to deal with painting a used car or a new car for a dealership, you know, but even on other stuff that comes through that shop, you know, we just listen, if it comes from the dealer through that shop, I'm charging full retail, even if it's a used car and it's going through the shop. So the dealership doesn't expect anything other than a high body shop price. You know what I mean? So, but I would get with those body shops and I would say, listen, here's the deal. Uh, I'll work out. If you want to work at a wholesale deal with the body shop, go listen. If any of those cars come through and you can give me a shot at it, I'm happy to fix any of that stuff you want me to without painting. And then you're getting the wholesale from the dealer on the ground. And then you're getting it through the body shops that are servicing the dealer. If you can meet those right people and, you know, set their expectation and get them to, to trust you enough to give you the work. And, and what you're saying there, Paul, is truly the way that it should be. I mean, that's well, I can 100% agree with that, man. It's the way that it should be. But I'm going to tell you what's in the back of what the challenge is there to overcome is that uh, an individual like Jeremy who has established relationships with his accounts for over 10 years or something like that goes in and tells them and, and starts implementing a size limit. Well, the first thing that Jeremy is going to worry about is the 10 guys because there's 60 guys in his area. The 10 guys that walked in last week offering their services – that will go above and beyond that size limit and just fix anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess that that ideally for a wholesale technician, I was in the wholesale uh, end of the industry. I got in it a little bit different. I talked about that earlier on the podcast, so I'm not going to revamp that. But um, you know, that's what's in the back of these guys' minds is that you know if I go in and start putting these restrictions, they're just going to look at me and say, "Well, you know, either we're just going to use you as long as we can, or we're going to find the next guy who will bend and do things the way that." they've been we've you know that they've been done in the past and i I really think that a lot of uh, a lot of it is is the used car manager that you got to deal with that at some point he's got to take them invoices up to the next level you know what i mean he's got to take them invoices so all of a sudden he's got to take them up to his boss and then his boss is going to look at that and say what what's what's this why what why did this change you know why did this change right and he's gonna have to look at him be like well you know they raised the price on us and, and you know what, you know, at a car dealership, the, I mean, the big boss man up top is going to be like, okay, well, what are we, wh- whose budget, who, what are we, where are we going to cut that? Are we going to cut some advertisement? Because a lot of times, like I've seen it where Christian Hans, the, the big wig who comes into dealerships around here, transforms them. I've seen it where he comes in and that's the very first thing that he does is cut all the vendors down by 20%. And, and he, he looks at the vendors and says, okay, you charge $100, $100 now for a detail. You're going to have to do it for 80 or we're going to find somebody else who, who can do it. And he does that because he takes that 20% and he pushes it back into advertisement. That's how he flips a dealership, and he changes things for them. Um, so I, I think there's a dynamic there that we got to look at, and I'm just kind of talking off the top of my head. Jeremy, what do you, what do you think about what I said there about that? Is that what I – mean, we have a size. We have a size limit, you know, for for doing uh, you know basic wholesale stuff. You know, we're by the panel. It can't be. I mean, honestly, my size limit. You know, anything over a quarter, half dollar, uh, you're getting upcharged. I mean, it just it is what it is. Um, or you could let this other dude come in and just stab it to death because that's what happens around here. Um, but no, I agree. <laughs> I mean, so you're 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 basically putting your skills up against the other guy. Yeah, that you, you yeah. start questioning. Hey, yeah, you mm-hmm. can do that, but but my skill level is way better than that. Whatever guy you're talking about, right? Yeah, I tell them that. I mean, I've told them they come in. Hey, this guy come in. I said, give him a shot, man. Let him do something for free. Let me see what it looks like. You know, let's just what, let's... what happens when somebody good rolls up in there? I mean, <laughs> Jeremy's like, it ain't never gonna happen. What happens when somebody good comes in there? <laughs> hey, look, 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 you know what I'm real saying? Good, if they're real good, they're not gonna be rolling up on a car line. Probably not, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm buying. I'm trying to buy this retail shop for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So I can get. You know, and I like wholesale. You know, I do. I like it. it keeps I hate it. We got we got killer relationships. I love all my management. You know, I really do. These guys are good to me. I've known them forever. You know, they love my technicians. At the same time, to raise the price, you know, it, the way I make the way we make our money is big dance. You know, the way we make our money is doing stuff that that they have to send to the body shop. You know, because that deal you have worked, in my opinion, now if it's Fifty dollars a car or thirty-five dollars a panel, whatever the deal is, it's not going to go up unless 
a, a whole new management comes in and you just lie to them and say, hey, here's the deal. We're charging a hundred dollars a car, you know, and they don't look at none of the paperwork. I've yet to but, see it. So do you, let me ask you this, Jeremy, do you, do you go to the manager and say, look, I'll do these, these normal dents for cheap, but you got to help me out and let me make some money on the big stuff mm-hmm. that I can do for you. Also saving you, saving that car from going to the body shop. I can do that. But you got to let me well, make some money on these big jobs. Let me tell you, the guys who have big issues with this, Daniel, is the very high volume ones, the ones that know that they become the, your only egg in your basket. So we got a collision or a, a, a dealership group called Voss here, and they typically hire one dent technician and cover his whole schedule, right? I literally watched them beat this guy down from 50 bucks a car down to $35 a car to eventually hiring him as an in-house technician and having yeah, yeah. him sign a five-year contract. Oh, a Walmart PDR tech, huh? Right. So they dwindled. And, and now he's a great te- – I'm going to tell you guys straight up, he's a great technician. He doesn't work for him now. He chases hail now, and he's a, ba- he's the big, he's a big boy out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Are you guys out there that, that do that? You're killing our industry. Listen, though, they knew they had him. You know what I mean? They had his yeah. whole income. Well, they do that. They you know what I mean? I mean? They come at me. I've got I've got one dealer group that has 17 stores. And, you know, they're, they've not done it to me. But I have another dealer group that constantly reminds me that, hey, we might go in-house. We might go in-house. And I just tell them good luck. I said, good luck, man. I mean, train whoever you want. And look, you, know you, actually, you know what you tell that dealer? You go, yeah, as soon as you do that, I'm hiring that guy. Yeah, is that? Well, I try to. <laughs> what I tell them is send them over here and I'll train them for you, you know, because I'm trying to get that money because as soon as he's trained. Yeah, and then you'll hire him. Exactly. <laughs> you know, at least I know he's trained the same way my guys are trained. Yeah, yeah I'm paid for training them and then you take them away. <laughs> I, I think, I think, Paul, what you said, though, getting back to the subject here is that, you know, I, I think that's a perfect recipe for guys who want to come in and, and open up an account. Because they have, they're not backtracking backtrack, you know, on anything. I think that's that, that's absolutely awesome to do that. Um, Listen, it's easier to build a wholesale uh, deal right from the beginning than yes. it is to try to change. I, I agree. There's no agree. doubt about that. Mm-hmm. And I don't pretend like this is something that's going to be easy for anybody with an existing wholesale route to do. It's not. It's a big shift to turn. It's going to take a really long time if you're going to get there. If you're in an existing situation, but for guys who are starting a new wholesale account, get them started on the right foot uh, for the sake, not only of the guy who's doing the work, but, but the guys in the future that are going to come along and want to work a deal with this, this uh, company and not get screwed and pay, you know, get paid $25 a car. Um, I, yeah, I but agree. I, think, I agree. Everything that Jeremy said, I a hundred percent agree. As a matter of fact, he said something interesting because one of the ways that I look at wholesale is kind of like the warranty programs. I don't know if you guys are, deal with any of those warranty programs. I, we had to do one. To, <laughs> yeah. We were asked to do one today and we turned it down. Nope. But. Will not. Absolutely will not. I love them. I love, I love them, them too. Many as I can get to my shop because the way you work those is a very, very similar to the way that I think you need to work, work a wholesale deal, which is you, you basically maximize the boundaries that they give you. The warranty company gives you boundaries. And you hold the customer to it and you go, listen, this is out of the coverage. Sorry, here's the full retail estimate. And either they pay it or they don't and they're out. And the only stuff that you ever cover with a warranty is the stuff that is clearly coverable, which usually would take text like the six of us, probably five seconds to fix, right? That's the only time you fix anything under a warranty. That's why I love them because they make it really clear and simple. But if you go into a wholesale situation doing the same thing, just like Jeremy said, do, do I love the fact that your size limit is a quarter, a dime to a quarter or whatever it is. Anything over a quarter, that's a separate charge. That's an upcharge. It's a bigger dent because that's where you make the money in the wholesale. And really, like I said, the only wholesale cars I see anymore are the ones that go through the, the dealer group's body shop. And then they call me to fix it before the dealer or the body shop ever writes an estimate on it for conventional repair. And yeah. I'm not kidding you when I tell you I've had used cars and new, car, new cars come through where they will pay me over conventional to fix it because they don't want to paint it. The body shop needs to get rid of it or at conventional. And the dealer has no idea because they're going, oh, the body shop's got the car, right? And so that's the way know, I work around that wholesale, but it pays me full resale. So is it really wholesale at that point? You have to ask the question. But you know, here's the philosophy I, I always look at is to get a new customer – you will pay 30% or more 
to get a new customer into your shop in advertising costs. So that's the same thing what you're, you're, you're giving up with those, those warranty programs. You're giving up 30% or more. But once that customer comes in and sees the kind of work you do, sees your shop, sees how nice it is, how convenient it is, you should own that customer for the rest of his life. He should always come back to you for his dent needs. Period. Yeah, it's like paying. It's like it's like paying a finder's fee. You know. You know. That's the thing, though. You know. The, the that's kind of the way I see it. But I see it from the other side. That after being in business for so long, you have so much repeat business. Anyhow, that I don't even have time to educate people anymore on why my service is better than the guys down the road. I don't want to. I hang up and just take a phone call from somebody who says, "Hey, John, you fixed my car last year." I'm coming back. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, but you need to keep growing, John. You need to keep growing. I don't think you can rely on those customers forever. Well, when, uh, honestly, when, when you get to the point where you have so much repeat business, where you're booked out for a month or two at a time, there's got to be a limit because now it's starting to infringe on your repeat customers because they're calling you up and they're saying, oh, my God, I got to wait two months, you know? And usually them are the ones that will wait. Because they've seen the work, they've seen what you've done for them in the past. I'm just telling you guys, if you spend time in your career building solid relationships, you know what I mean, with everybody who comes through your door, eventually the momentum's going to hit so incredible for you that you will never have to advertise or have an advertisement cost or look for work again. It's it's a momentum building type thing. Now you can scale your business and bring in more technicians and stuff like that. But we're talking about a different animal. If we're just talking about you being super busy, you, you get to a point, and that's where I got to the point with the the you know the uh, insurance companies or dent insurance companies. They want me to fill out paperwork. They want me to send it in, wait for a check. I ain't got no time for that, man. You know what I yeah. mean? Or call and argue with them. Dude, I don't well, even take, you know. Funny because I bet the reason that, that uh, Daniel and I like it is because we both have front office people that we make do that crap. You know what I mean? You're right. 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 But I think, I think most, most guys aren't on the level that you are. Most guys haven't built that rapport in their market, right? So um, for the guys who haven't yet, it's actually a good way to, to get in front of new customers and you can work them. I mean, I'll tell you what. I don't know if you remember this. I told the story somewhere, but um, Dent Zone had a warranty product for their Chrysler, Chrysler products that was an unlimited dent size. Size, I'm sorry. And I did a Fender on a Challenger for seventeen hundred bucks. I did two bedsides on a Dodge Chart, uh, Dodge um, Ram, that the warranty company paid thirty three hundred dollars dollars for. Is so, Dent Zone still in business, or did probably you not? We probably put them out of business, but my, my point is that, I, and <laughs> by the way, I haven't seen another one of those unlimited si- dent sizes. Uh, Actually, the, the company you want to look for is three in one. Three in one will pay you whatever you want to charge. So three the money one is a great is warranty there, company. But you got to work it. it. It only works if you work it. I happen to be in a position, I think Daniel's in the position where it's worth it to us to go, hey, front office dude, uh, call this person, schedule it. Uh, look at it, do the estimate. If it doesn't re- go through their, yeah, you know, yeah. their uh, limitations, then write a now, Paul, And Paul, in your situation, you don't even have to wait to get paid. I mean, they just pretty much cut you a paycheck regardless. Like when they get paid, like if you do a dent that week, you know what I mean? You don't have to wait the three months it takes a warranty company to pay no. you, right? Right. That, well, technically, yes, that's true. Um, or do, do they do they require you to wait for your commissions to come in to get paid, or they just no, pay no, no, you? No, I'm grandfathered in. I'm grandfathered into the old school system where whatever my bi- I get paid on my bill, my billing that month. But, yeah, see uh, well, that two months retro. But you're right. I am it's telling you, if you face that, if, for three months, dude. The, it, again, it, it also depends on how do you manage your finances in the business too. You know what I mean? Like, well, if you manage your finances where you're dependent on on whatever's coming in. That that month and you're stretching, it's going to be tough. You're right, you know. Yeah, but so, you know, but also the thing is, the way I look at it is, I don't like billing anybody anything. You know what I mean? 
I just don't, you know what I mean? I, I, I just, whenever somebody's finished, I want to get paid because I don't want to do all the work or ha- have my wife, which she, you know, she does all the front end office work and all that stuff. But I don't want to even put the work on her plate to worry about, like, you know, who's paying what or when it doesn't come in in two months, giving them a phone call and stuff like that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's the beauty of retail. That's the beauty of retail because they pay, they smile, they're happy, and they leave. Yep. (laughs) So here's the question, guys. This is what this podcast is about. (laughs) Is, Is wholesale worth staying in are you do you think if you have a do you think you're going to make more my my question is 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 it worth the pain in the ass here's my point right currently wholesale is not worth it right but my my point is can wholesale be redeemed to the point where it becomes worth it again right i think it can be can you can jeremy carroll turn all 40 of his dealerships around and start getting double the price out of them. I don't know. That's a really hard thing to do. But for guys who are new going into it and for guys who are currently doing it to start turning the ship, can it be done? I have to ask the question. I mean, honestly, I heard a lot of guys saying the retail PDR is just going down the tubes, but look at us. I don't think, I think we saw a pretty major shift in the industry in, over the last few years to the point that I truly believe that there's never been a better time to be a PDR tech, especially one who has years of uh, experience. I agree I mean, with you, Paul. I, All you wholesale guys out there, raise your prices 2% tomorrow. It ain't going to happen like that, dude. I'm telling yeah, you. I, I'm telling I, you it is. I, it ain't yeah, going to happen. Raise your prices. Everybody that's listening, raise your prices 2%. I, okay, raise hey, your prices. Hey, say it in a hip, hypnotic Boil voice. them slow. <laughs> I, I, think, I, I personally think the retail is well worth it. Or not retail, wholesale, excuse me. Wholesale, you can make money. I mean, we we make really good money doing wholesale. If you do, you can make money doing wholesale if you're a fast technician. And no matter what the price is, you know, I mean, it, to extent, like I hear you guys talking about twenty five dollars a car, thirty five dollars a car. Guys, if it was that cheap, I would have stayed doing hell. You know, I, I'm in an area to where what I'm. Do you charge? Uh, uh, th- I, we charge thirty five dollars a panel. You know, we charge thirty five dollars a panel, a hundred and five dollar cap. Um, anything over a quarter, we upcharge. It, you know, uh, usually we add a panel to that pan to that panel mm-hmm. for that upcharge. Is there a uh, dent limit per panel? Uh, it just it's it's all it's just case by case. I don't put nothing in fine. I, I'm I'm a salesman. I don't put nothing in, in writing. When I go in there and I talk to them, I said, "This is what you got." So if I give them a list, here's your list. You know, this is what you got. This one's got this, this, this. They said, "Yeah, do them." I give them a bill, they smile, smack them on their ass, and I'm out of the store. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, so, just, that's the way it Jeremy, works. Jeremy, here, here in Dayton, Ohio, it got down to about 35 bucks a car is what they pay here. Yeah, see, we don't – unfortunately, man, we, we don't have to deal with that. You know, I'm I, when I got here, my biggest competition was the Wizards. They was at that price. You know, when I come in, I didn't know nothing about wholesale. So – that's so I'd, I just start follow, I'd start following that guy and he's taking pictures of his work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a couple of deals down here that that I know of, and one is uh, the uh, my brother's dealing with this. He's getting paid fifty dollars a car on all units uh, that come through, whether they have dents or not, right? Which I always think is a great idea because if you can pay it on every unit, that's great. I agree. Not. Um, then he's got another deal where um, he's getting $75 per car on any unit that needs PDR. Um, and I think that one has a three-panel cap. He can't touch more than three panels on the car. Then the latest deal that I helped him work, we did with the Mercedes dealership where he's getting, uh, I want to say it's 50 and then $35 for each additional panel, 50 for the first panel, 35 for each additional panel, three-panel caps. So that puts you at 120 per car. Anything uh, over three panels needs to get special permission. Anything over three inches gets a retail estimate, and then they get a, I want to say, a 20% discount. So, and, and here's, that's he was, a good format. Yeah. So, so, so here's my point, though, right? So, so when you start playing with these formats, you can make wholesale worth it again. It's all about how you, it's presentation, really, is what it comes down to, right? Or do they feel like they are getting something valuable for the price that they're paying? And, and 
can you, it, does the volume make up for whatever discount that they're getting? So my point is if guys start to get creative about the way that they structure their deal with the dealerships, then there is, a, I think that wholesale is salvageable. And that's my whole point and position. Um, I don't know the exact answer or the exact format and formula yet, but I've been kind of thinking it through, having conversations with guys like Daniel, uh, listening to punks like Mike and John. <laughs> and and just kind of having the opportunity to influence guys who are doing wholesale deals and having them try different stuff. It's really interesting to see how things you know are working out and what people are responding to. And I'll tell you this. My brother told me he did a he did a uh, a car a wholesale car for that Mercedes dealership. Actually, it was an off brand car, it was a Subaru uh, Outback, and he did uh, two panels on the car. So he built eighty five bucks on the in on the uh, covered stuff, and it had a, something like a ten inch dent on the fender. We priced uh, he priced it at like I think he told me seven hundred dollars, and they got a twenty percent discount. So he built. They said yes, he built whatever that number is on that fender for the Mercedes dealer. Cause they said, yeah, we want that fixed. So my point is he made, uh, it was something like $585 on that one car wholesale deal. Right. So, and they understand that because when they get a 10 inch down on a fender, they're like, well, I, what am I going to do? Send it to the body shop. Uh, or I can have the PDR guy do it and pay him a couple extra, you know, dollars. So I think there are formulas and formats uh, of, of um, pricing that can work with wholesale I don't know exactly what the one magic formula is, but we're tweaking it. We're working it. And, uh, you know, I think if guys are willing to have, be open-minded enough to go, hey, maybe there's a d better way to do this, even if it's a small change, it's it's then it's a change in a direction that could potentially eventually turn, um, you know, the whole I, whole I think story. guys need to post some ideas. And if you guys can go on mm -hmm. our Facebook page, post your ideas of some formats, some creative ideas, anything you guys can come up with, share with other guys. Um, that's going to help the wholesale industry. And I'll just well, be straight it. up with you guys. I'm happy the conversation is happening. You know what I mean? And um, there, there needs to be some, you know what I mean? There needs to be a little conflict over it because that helps solve problems. You know what I mean? And what Paul's saying here is definitely cool. You know what I'm saying? That, But we're also talking about different areas of the country. So we got to take that dynamic, uh, you know what I mean, in as well. Because oh, it's so at? different, man. So different. Paul lives where they take all our money. They steal all our money and send it. Oh, he lives in D.C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with all the rich folks. See, we're in Podunk, Hillbilly, Tennessee. Where, where they steal all our money and send it. We'll replace a bumper and paint it for $300, you know. So it that's the problem. That's the problem. Big stuff, man. <coughs> well, we got, you know, you got a 10-inch dent here, you know, even retail. We just did one. I posted one yesterday. It was a CRV Pro White. We priced it for 650 bucks and it was a crush dent, crush dent. She come back to me and she said, well, I had two body shops, which they're both DRP body shops, one at 500, one at 550. You know, we sold her on the fact that you get one paint job from the factory and that's all you get, you know, and it's pearl white. Are they going to blend the door? Is it going to look right? And she come back and brought it to us. But at the same time, these body shop labor rates are $44 an hour here. And it's just, that's what I contend with on retail and even wholesale. wholesale. So I, I, our body shop labor rates are 42 an hour up here. Jesus. And I'm constantly. Mine's 110. I'm constantly pricing oh. stuff over conventional. And yeah. I don't always get it, obviously. But, um, so I know what you're dealing with on the, on the labor rate part. Um, and as far as the dealers go, I mean, to be honest with you, yeah, I, I, this this area is affluent. It's very affluent. So there's on the retail side, there's money to be spent on dent repair, especially you get people buy nice cars. They want to keep them nice. You get you know the deal. But um, on the wholesale side of things, I don't know how different it really is, though. You know what I mean? Except for the competition in your area may be willing to go lower than the competition in my area. I don't know that for sure because, to be honest with you, I don't have my finger on the pulse of the wholesale pricing in this area as I used to. Uh, but – Regardless, I would say even what what's the small change that you could do that wouldn't lose you the dealership, but that might net you a little more. I don't know what that is for you, Jeremy. I mean, you you would have to be the one to figure it out. But you know, I'm just throwing ideas out here for oh, other yeah. people setting deals up and going. How do we turn this? How do we how do we turn this thing around, man? How do we salvage it from going down in the dumps? You know. 
Well, I mean, you, you make a good down. point. You know, you make a really good point at it. I mean, and that's the thing is, for me, I've got so much stuff already set up. It's hard to just go in and change. It's hard to up the pricing. You know, I try to make, like I said, we try to make our money on the big stuff. You know, that's where we try to make our money. You know, we do free. I mean, you know, everybody does. You got a manager come out. Hey, I got this. Yeah, I'll knock it out for free. No big deal. You know, in hopes that the next time the guy comes in at $20 a panel or $45 a car, he said, get out of here, you know. Um, but again, you know, it, it's, you know, it, I don't think wholesale's dead. Um, education, you know, a lot of these guys aren't businessmen. A lot of these guys are just guys that are detail guys that apprenticed under a drunk ass hell technician and, you know, podunk Oklahoma and they move somewhere and they can't make no money. You know, that's the problem is the education part of, it. you know, you, you have a skill. We are, we're all, all six of us, skilled laborers, every one of us, you know, but you might not look at that the same way. Like you might be more proud of your skill than I am, but what happens is like we here, I've got an old man been doing it for 30 years and all he does is brag about how cheap he is. Every time I see him, well, I'm still the cheapest. Well, that's awesome. I'm the highest paid. Congratulations. You know, and, I mean, that's it. I mean, that, and that's kind of what we have to always deal with is, you know, if you can educate everybody in the wholesale market, it's the same with hell. I do hell every year. Every year the prices get cheaper for percentages of the body shop. You know, it's got to the point to where I almost want to always do retail, you know, because then it's in my ballpark, you know, so yeah, I don't know. No, I get can, it. Can, can I summarize on, on some stuff, what we just talked about? So, um, because we're getting close to the end, guys. Um, so, gosh, dang it. Shoot. All right. I just erased it on accident. But, hey, I was right taking down notes. But uh, <laughs> That's that's man, Mike Toledo 101 right there for you, man. Right, erased man. it. Uh, Hold so, on. I erased my notes. Oh, I just <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Didn't did click that button. Oh, oh no. I, I, do off the I had notes all spelled wrong. And yeah. Instead of – instead of, <laughs> You didn't talk about none of them. <laughs> I, I, here, here's, how, here's how I explain it, man. I, I, if you're going to get into wholesale, follow Paul's formula. I think it's it's one of the best advices you could do. Uh, it is you're gonna have to tweak it to to make your own formula to really polish it out. I think that's uh, that's a tremendous advice there. Um, but don't but sell your quality, your skill, and your reliability over anything. That's what that's what I think. Uh, if you're gonna get in there, I mean, they, even they care about price, but man, give them something else. You know, hey, I'm reliable. I'm dependable. That is almost like you're almost cheaper than just being the cheapest guy. I, I in my opinion, I, if that's what you can, if that's what you want to pursue, sell it like that, along with the package thing, the formula that Paul mentioned, and Jeremy, what Jeremy says, hey, you you have a size limit, make your money, find it, find an end where you can make money in the wholesale. And I think the guys that are making the money in the wholesale are the hustlers. You have to hustle. It's a yeah. hustle. Yeah, you have to want it. If you're going in there all week and yeah, hi, I'm here to do your dance. I'm Vince. And, uh, I'm Dude, that's that. exactly the way I would show up. If I got forced to go to a dealer, I would walk in just like that. Be like, hey, your between your legs. I'd be like, yeah. Fuck. Hey, uh, Mike, I'd be like, where's the coffee? Where's the coffee? Mike, you touched on on exactly how I sell everything. When I walk into a new deal, I sell it like this. I sell it on reliability, accountability and quality. I don't sell it on quality first because I'm good. And that's exactly what I tell him. I said, look, your dent guy, I guarantee you he ain't reliable. I could bet money on it, call any account I got. If it's minus 14 and snow and I'm there, okay, I'm never going to miss an appointment. Thank you for that. We don't do that. You know, accountability, I'm insured. You know, here's all my credentials. I was like, quality, that's easy for us. And that's how I sell every deal that I walk into. You know, I want to meet the first guy, and this is for everybody who want to do wholesale. You want to get in wholesale? Meet everybody. Walk in the door, that salesman, that greeter, make sure that guy knows your name. Because if that guy knows your name and the next guy knows your name, eventually everybody will know your name and they'll forget about who they're using. Because yeah. people don't look at it like that. They don't They don't make relationships like that. I, I And just to, and I agree. And to finish my point, this thing is, is do, your, do your job right. Right. Show up, do your thing. Right. Everything will handle itself. But act like that is not going that, that you could lose that account anytime. Go get more accounts. Don't get comfortable 
with one one account. I or, totally or, agree with that, Mike. Don't, don't get comfortable, too comfortable. Oh, I got three accounts and making this much. Keep planting the seeds. Keep putting. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Go after the retail market. The body shop market is just. In fact, I think the body shop market is market is the easiest market to get into than any other market. I I believe because again, it, you're selling your reliability, your quality, and your skill. Well, so let me make two points. Um, one, Jeremy actually made made the point is one of the things I heard over and over again in the way that he handles his accounts is consistency. Consistency is is underrated. I mean, the reality is the guys from dealerships, the guys in body shops who are dealing with vendors all day long, guess what they want? They just want people who do what they say they're going to do, right? Yeah. They want people who are going to show up on time, show up when they said they were going to show up and do the job, do it right so that they don't have comebacks and they don't have to go and check on you, right? Yeah. And uh, the second point I wanted to make was about body shops. I think you're right, Mike, but not only are body shops an easy uh, transition into retail, but um, they can be really lucrative. And this happened to me literally yesterday. Uh, body shop calls me. Actually, it was the number one caliber in the nation um, just a couple months ago. He calls me in. Says, "Look at this fender." I look at the fender. I measured. It, I said, "Listen, that's a six hundred fifty dollars dent in the fender and a Subaru." And he goes, "Okay." He calls me the next day and says, uh, "I need you to fix it." And by the way, I sold it for eight hundred dollars to you. And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> it, it, if you get to build the right relationships in body shops, it can really it can pay you more than you than you want. <laughs> Which yeah. is not- oh yeah, we have a body shop day. I mean, we have a day that we just do body shops. My technicians, that's what they do, you know. And and the body shops sell it, and we do it, and it's a great. And when I started this account, I had three accounts, and I had about ten body shop accounts. And those body shop accounts had kept me floating until I got more wholesale dealer work. You know, I mean, because you can charge you not exactly what you want, because you know I want it all, but you know at the same time you can make good money. Yep. Yeah, and I, body shops are taking advantage of us. I found out today I had a customer come in with a Subaru, and they went to a local body shop, and I I had fixed a door ding in the dent in the car. I charged one hundred sixty five dollars. Found out from the customer that they got charged their deductible five hundred dollars to fix that dent, and I was like, smart Whoa, body shop. They, <laughs> they made they made some money <laughs> money on that customer. Yeah. All right, guys, we gotta we gotta wrap it up, man. This is a great conversation, uh, Jeremy. Dude, thanks for coming in, man. Oh, you, you gave some great insights about the wholesale. Paul Corden, yeah, you know we know you. You always come come correct, man. So yeah, I know. Seriously, thanks thanks to you both, guys. Uh, re- it, this was probably one of the most educational, I think, as far as what wholesale needed. It gives people kind of a something to measure. You know, uh, are you in this kind of, you know, going that way? Sorry, Vince, go ahead, dude. Oh, no, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it gets the conversation going. Like we, yeah, yeah, said. it does. So, Good stuff. Paul, you're just be persistent, man. Persistence. Anybody out there want to do wholesale persistence, just, you know, be reliable, show up, you know, don't be annoying. Yeah. Don't annoy them, you know, but be persistent and just beat the streets. You'll make money. If you're a hustler, every, every hustler makes money. Yeah. Yep, yep. yep. Okay, guys, it's a wrap. So, John, you got you want to? What, yeah. What's, what's your closing? Hey, right I'll just go ahead and give a closing thought right here, guys. That if you are doing, you know, wholesale, you decide to go into that. You're starting out in wholesale. You know, start working the retail end of things as well. Just diversify. Don't like like Mike was saying earlier. Don't put all your eggs in that one basket. And one day you may be able to completely exit from that, or at least you'll have an idea what really fits you, you know? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. All right, guys, level up your tools and join the revolution.